Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is straight out of Boston here, aka the King of Boston. Today we're back for episode 19 of my Houston Astros series on another part baseball 15. And today we are ready to move into the 2019 2020 MLB offseason, coming off of our first World Series victory in franchise history with a four game sweep over the Philadelphia Phillies. I'm sure all of you watched that video. Um, but we are ready to move on and try to move past just one championship, try to win multiple, and uh, maybe even build a little bit of a dynasty here in Houston. I think that would be pretty cool. So let's check out uh, what is in store for us here. It looks like ooh, we have a little bit of a special screen here. We did win the uh, Major League Championship, the World Series, of course. This is pretty cool. Looks like this is just made looking at Major League history. And uh, you get a cool little champion's page here. So that is pretty sweet, if I do say so. Um, but yeah, anyway, so let's move on past it. Oh, whoops. Didn't even check my inbox here. But um, okay, so our market size increased. Awesome. It has increased to below average. That's good, I guess. <laughs> Houston's not a small market. I think we just don't have a big fan base. Um, our budget is up to 144 million. That's pretty sweet. Uh, I think it was at 126 last year, or maybe 130 or something. I don't remember exactly, but either way, it's a substantial increase. Um, some people leaving. Looks like our bench coach left, and we'll have to look at the salary arbitration. Um, Dave Martinez. Huh, you got a manager job. That's pretty cool. Um, Trammell. Alan Trammell? Really? Got forced out. That's surprising. Um, all right, so let's go to the salary arbitration. So Marco Gonzalez, Adam Morgan, Matt Adams, Alexander Guerrero, and Carlos Correa. Okay, so Gonzalez, I'm going to... Uh, I don't think I want... Yeah, we're going to withdraw the offer to Gonzalez. Um, same, I think, to Adam Morgan. He was not that good. Yeah, I think I'm going to withdraw the offer to Adam Morgan. So that's too bad. That was sort of a bust of a trade, but I will very much give the 800000 to both Guerrero and Adams. And Correa, I'd like to bang out an extension with. Um, and then we do have some free agent decisions to make. We have a lot of guys free agents this year. Some of them just bench players, sort of role players, but Kevin Chapman is one of them. That's a guy we definitely want to re-sign, but he's probably going to get a lot of money. We might have to make a tough decision there. And Madison Bumgarner, um, at some point we're going to have to fill that third starter spot. Not sure how. But that's something we're definitely going to have to explore. First, let's work on the Correa extension. Um, now, he is fragile, so I am a little bit wary of something like this. But, um, so he's in his first year in arbitration. He's got two arbitration years, and then he heads to free agency. So I say we go eight here. We can bump this to ten. And then I'm not going to go more than, maybe we even offer the initial as ten for this. So let's go ten for all these free agent years is what I mean. Like that. Uh, don't make it a player option. And he is 25. He is pretty fragile, so this could be risky to give him a long term contract like this. But let's even make it seven years. Not bad, but I'm not ready to sign just yet. He wants a little bit more salary. So let's go back to the three year mold. Um, we're going to go back to eight here. There's no reason for him to be getting 11 in his first arbitration year. Um, and we're going to go to 10. And then maybe we'll bump this to 12. Like that. And we'll go, mm, I don't know if I want to do, we'll do a six year commitment with him. All right, it looks like an acceptable offer. So we'll get back to us. Hopefully he signs that. So far I haven't actually had a negotiate or a, uh, an extension turned down after they actually accept the offer. Um, Bumgarner, I think we're gonna let go yeah, you're not giving him eight years and 136 million. No, thank you. Um, Jaime Garcia, we're gonna let walk for now. Kevin Chapman, a guy that I really want back. Um, he wants three years. Okay, he does not want a big contract. I will more than I'm more than willing to give him three years and six million or whatever he wants here. Let's go. Let's go plus minus. All right, three years, six million. Definitely would give that to Kevin Chapman. Let's go back to salary arbitration. Maybe we should offer arbitration to Madison Bumgarner. I think we'll do that because that works. We give him a one-year deal, and it's a tradable one-year deal. So, yeah, we'll do that. Um, Cook, Doolittle, we're going to let go. Kelly, we're going to let go. Martin and Gordon, we're all going to let go. Okay. Um, now, I talked about it at the deadline, and we do have a hole in our – we have a couple holes in our rotation now with some of the guys potentially leaving. 
And with some of our young guys coming up, I think a trade for a pitcher would be a good idea. Now, I don't know if that would be something like a Justin Williams trade for a pitcher, which Williams has high value, but I don't love him as a player, just the way he plays, sort of his skill set and all that stuff put together. But it could also be a package of Alatori and Ryan Mountcastle for another sort of stud pitcher on the market. But um, it's something that I'm definitely going to have to go explore. We do have some budget room, I think. Um, and I wonder if we should try to make the deal now or wait until free agency starts. Um, Cause teams are going to have more needs when free agency starts, but they might have less money. I think we should wait till free agency starts though. So we will skip ahead here. Um, yeah, we'll skip ahead a little bit. All right. So we got a couple contracts signed Chapman signed our three or $6 million offer and Carlos Correa signed. What did that end up being a, Six year, what's that? 48, 58, 60, 66, six year, 66 million dollar contract offer. So we get Correa at a likely below market deal, which is always what we like to do. And uh, I think both those deals worked out pretty well. So it is award season, and we do have a couple of gold glovers to start things out here Russell Martin and Jonathan VR. So Martin gets a gold glove despite only playing 106 games. That must have meant he was pretty good defensively, I guess. He's a very highly rated defensive catcher, so. It does sort of make sense. Um, next up is Rookie of the Year. I don't think Alatori is going to... He might place in this. He didn't even place. That doesn't surprise me too much. Um, he didn't play a ton. I think he did lose his rookie eligibility, though. Manager of the Year. Um, second straight year, Soped Church gets it. That is pretty sweet. Now we have, what, Pitcher of the Year, I think? And it goes to Steven Strasburg, who had a phenomenal year. Eight and four with a 2.71 ERA and a save, <laughs> 0.91 whip, 11.3 wins above replacement. His WAR was actually higher than the year he had in Philly the year before when he had a 1.88 or or 1.88 ERA. WHIP was the same though. Babbitt was really low that year. Yeah, should have seen some regression coming. But anyway, pretty cool out of Strasburg, and Pineda actually finishes third. Wow, did not see that coming. But Pineda was very solid for us. He didn't get hurt despite his fragile uh, injury history so that's cool and ooh, who got this Riley Farrell all right and then we have what hitter of the year I believe yep Guanso Park takes it for the third straight year Carlos Correa finishes second though despite only playing 130 games so that's cool he did have a pretty impressive slash line and a 7.3 wins above replacement and I think we uh, I think that's it for award season all right, so we do have the Rule 5 draft, and then we will get the arbitration hearings handed down to us, or the arbitration salaries handed down to us. So we'll go to the Rule 5 draft, um, see if there's anything worth taking here. I do sort of doubt it, but we will see. Carson Smith, um, Ryan Ro Rodenbaugh, who apparently had a good finish to the year. John Wiesner has high potential, it looks like. Um, well, I think our head scout obviously thinks a little bit more of him. Um... But either way, the potential is there. Could be worth a pick, similar to what Aldo Silva was to us um, when we took him in the Rule 5 draft. Sort of a project player who we can stash in our bullpen for a year. Silva didn't really work out. Um, might be better off taking a guy like Brendan Butler, who could be half decent. Oh, sorry, I'm watching the Red Sox game on my TV. And Clay Buckholtz gave up a home run. Um, he had a good year in AAA last year. I think we should take Brendan Butler. Seems like he's pretty good. He's got a good pitch and a fastball, and sort of, it's always what you look for out of bullpen pieces is sort of having one good pitch. Ooh, Will LaMarche. Looks like another pretty, ooh. The OSA ratings like Will LaMarche. So maybe we'll take both these guys. I think we'll take, how did LaMarche do last year? Solid year in AAA. Bullard is a bit better of a track record, but I think we'll maybe take both. Oh, we have to skip to our turn, of course. If both of them fall, which I think they will, yep. We'll take LaMarche first, and then we will go after Butler here. Yeah, I'm going to pass on Wiesner, and I think that's going to do it for the draft. Draft, all right, and we'll complete. Skip ahead today and get these salary arbitrations, or salaries, I should say. Guerrero gets eight, uh, okay, he got 80,000 more than I wanted. Um, and Adams receives 800,000. 
Honestly, it's just muscles. Um, okay. So we'll skip out a couple days to free agency, and then we'll start to work a bit of our magic here. I think we're going to have some money with Bumgarner coming off the books, but we will obviously find out. So yes, Bumgarner does file for free agency, declined arbitration, so that's good. We will get a pick if and when he gets signed. Um, and we'll take a look at the free agency class. Looks like, according to this, Henry Mejia leads the way. Manny Machado on the market. Wow. Um, so let's go to the free agent list. And see if there are any pitchers worth picking up. I think that's where we would primarily target. And a catcher, potentially. Um, Derek Norris is there. But I also think that if we do have two good young catchers, and um, I sort of don't mind uh, having that catcher spot be sort of a weakness in our lineup. We don't have a ton of money for free agents. Only $7.5 million. Might be able to free some of that money up. Um, but let's go by overall and see if there's anyone worth going for. We should go to starting pitcher, starting pitching, starting pitchers. So, ooh, King Felix at only 11.5. Oh, and he's coming off a great year. He would have, I mean, it would come with compensation, but still. Ooh, okay. So that's, that's a guy who we should free up money for. Wow, this is a great pitching class. Holy crap. Look at some of these names. Jeff Samarja, Sonny Gray, Taiwan Walker. Whoa. And he does not want a lot of money. Uh, he could be a good buy low option. Taiwan Skywalker. Okay, never heard that before. Johnny Cueto, Patrick Corbin, Justin Verlander, Matt Moore. This is an insane class. Yeah, Salazar's coming off of that awful year with Minnesota, so it doesn't surprise me that he doesn't want anything. All right, my main target's Felix Hernandez. That is for sure. The question is, how do we clear four million in finances to sign him? Um, if we go to salaries, so yes, the upkick in money does come from the Correa extension slash him going to. Yeah, there is there are some guys that are making more money than they were last year. Bryant is two years away from an extension. Okay, or from arbitration, I should say. Um, I don't think I want to trade Harper or Strasburg. Harper had a really good year for us last year, and I just I don't want to trade him one year after signing him. I want him to be a piece here for the future. Um, I don't. It's gonna be hard to deal. I, can't, I don't think we can deal any of these guys. We're such big pieces to us last year. Maybe Hernandez is not a realistic option. And Buckles give up another homer. God, I hate this team. Um, I mean, unloading Ramos and Pineda maybe, but they were so good for us last year. Hmm, this does make it tough. Now, another thing I might explore is shopping around Justin Williams. So I'm going to shop him around and see if we get any big starting pitching offers. I don't think we're going to, but we might be something we do in a manual trade. We do have money to take on salary. Um... Like we can, I think we, well, maybe not actually because our projected budget room is not high. So I don't know, um, but we might look at trying to acquire a starter here. So before I make any moves in free agency, I'm going to explore the trade market a little bit. And then if not, um, we'll see what we can do with this free agent class. All right, so I'm sort of in this long, uh, well, not long, but complicated trade process with the Arizona Diamondbacks who are just loaded with young pitching um, and young and cheap pitching, which usually go hand in hand. Um, basically, they have three studs. Jake Godfrey, Johander Quintana, and Thomas Zapuki, who I have no idea how to pronounce that name. Um, now, I'm pretty set that one of the guys I want is Johander Quintana. Um, he had the best stats of all the three last year. He's durable. He's got good stamina. He's got a good fastball forkball combo, good control. Or at least good control potential, you know, good, great stuff. I think I'm set that I want him at the least, and that would cost me Justin Williams, which is fine. I have Alatori coming up. Williams is a high power, high strikeout guy. I have plenty of those guys in my lineup. I don't necessarily need another one, so I'm fine with parting with Justin Williams if it means Johander Quintana. Now, I also want to pick another guy off of him. Jake Godfrey is a guy I'm considering, and Thomas Zapuki is the other guy I'm considering. Um. And I think I'm siding with Godfrey here because I look at the stats, I see great stuff, only three pitches, and his control isn't the best. Now, the OSA ratings say it's good. My head scout thinks uh, slightly less. Um, 
but he's got a great fastball curveball, good changeup as a third pitch. But his cons are his stamina is only a six. He's already two years. He has already two years of MLB service time, so he's going to hit arbitration a year quicker, and he's fragile than Zapuki. Um, Zapuki's also also fragile, but he only has one year of MLB service time. His stamina is high. Now the the Godfrey stamina thing does sort of scare me. Um, I'm not sure what's up with that because he did throw 185 innings last year. But I don't know why his stamina is so low. And I don't know if that's going to improve if we just keep starting him. His projected major league role is a starter. So I, it's he it makes me nervous. Um, but my gut tells me to go Godfrey here. And I think I'm going to go Godfrey. So that's going to cost us Ryan Mountcastle, who I like really don't want to give up in this trade. But it's pretty much what I got to do. Um, I'd love to keep Mountcastle around just because I've coveted him for so long. Um, he's such a great asset, but I, there's no other way we get this deal done. I, I mean, if we could offer them, you know, I, I wouldn't give up Alatori at this point, but I mean, we can offer them pretty much anyone, and I, I don't think they're going to do it. Even st- I mean, I don't think they would want a closer. Yeah, Steve England, no. I mean, if you make this deal work now, it's, yeah, there's no one really to do it with. So it um, it stinks. And we're also giving up Tom Haas as a 24-year-old prospect, who I guess he's a good defensive infielder, but he's just sort of a throw-in that always makes these deals work. So it's going to cost us Mountcastle, which is too bad. Um, but you got to do what we got to do, I guess. So let's go back to put Mountcastle in there. Um, remove MP Kinos. And I think we're going to do it. I it, This is such a big trade, it does make me a little nervous um, to do so. But, I mean, I just, it, it does, it, you know, this is always the type of trade that can come back and haunt you. Williams and Mountcastle are such high overalls, and Mountcastle is going to be a beast. He's going to be a top of the lineup type of guy. Oh, he died. He, he, I think we got to do it, though. We got to do it. Let's just do it. Johander Quintana and Jake Godfrey. Godfrey does feel like a risk for me just because of his stamina and he's fragile. And he's going to go to arbitration quicker than the other guys. Or than Zapuki. I don't know how to pronounce Zapuki's name, though. So, you know what? Let's do it. Okay. We did the trade. Yes, I'm not surprised. Fan reaction is going to decrease slightly. Ooh, noticeably for Williams. That surprises me because Williams is a selfish player. At least he's regarded as one. Um, okay. So, I don't know how to feel about that. But that was a huge trade. So now we pretty much have our rotation set with those guys, plus Pineda, plus Strasburg and Waka. So we don't necessarily need to go after a, um, a, uh, sorry, I got distracted for a moment, a starter here. Uh, so we might be able to spend that seven million on a catcher, which could show up the bottom of our lineup. We also have Sharp, Sh- JJ Schwartz, and Kyle Schwarber. Now, instead of using this money for free agents, we could also potentially flip the money for, or, fl- or sorry, use the money in a trade involving Schwarber and Schwartz maybe for a, sort of a more established catcher, or it could potentially go to a reliever. Um, we sort of have a lot of options. I wouldn't mind giving it to a reliever. We still have Schimpf. Uh, we, we pretty much have our guys from last year, but like, hey, Craig Campbell's a free agent, and he's like historically good, um, although not so much. Mm, excuse me, not so much in this game. Although, wow, he is very highly rated. Um, we cost $6 million. So we're not going to go after King Felix. We're not going to go after any starters. We're going to let those young guys fill out those last couple spots in our rotation. Wow, Machado only wants $10 million. He is a little bit fragile, so that sort of makes sense. But I think Machado's a stud. And he is one of... I wouldn't call him one of my favorite players, but I do enjoy watching him play. Would be cool to have him on the team, but obviously no spot for him. Um, so Yadier Molina and Derek Norris are catching free agents. Let's ah crap! I keep sorting by the wrong stuff, Ugh, and it's going pretty slowly, which is frustrating. Um, so let's go to catchers, and we'll sort by overall. All right, so there's definitely a drop off after Molina and Norris. I think if it came down to getting some of these buy low options, oh, bring back Jason Castro. Um, I would rather just let our young guys catch and see what they can do. Um, I don't, yeah, I didn't, don't really have money for Molina or Norris, so it doesn't make sense to go after those guys. I didn't, yeah, Molina had a decent year. I wouldn't call it a great year for them last year. 
Um, so we maybe we'll explore a trade for a catcher, and maybe depending on that, we could dip some money into if we go to all relievers, maybe a Craig Kimbrell, or if we go all the way to the top. Rondon wants a lot of money. Jonathan Broxton does not want a lot of money. Neither does our oldest Chapman. That's an interesting one. He has very similar ratings to Kimbrell. Coming off a worse year, though. But he does want more money. So we have some options here of what to do. We could get Jordan Walden back, who does not want a lot of money. We could sort of, instead of going after one big reliever, go after a combo like getting Walden and... I don't know, Scott Elbert or something. Maybe Walden and Jonathan Broxton. So I don't know, we have a couple options here. We do have Derek Dickey back, so he's a lefty. Cole Hamels, wow. Um, yeah, Morgan's free agent. Marco Gonzalez is a free agent. See, Boone Logan could be a good lefty out of the pen. So we have some options. We should take a look at our pen here. First, let's go to the rosters. We'll go to players DFA'd and put these guys on our active roster so we can sort of get a view of what our pitching staff's going to look like next year. Boy, I'm excited to get these two guys. I... Like, if we can get a... Uh, I mean, just, I'm excited about our rotation. So, Quintana and... Where is the other guy? Godfrey. There you are. We're going to put Pineda as the three. Who is also fragile and did not get hurt last year, so... Maybe I should have more faith. Um, we don't necessarily need a reliever. But the, these four guys are all unknown commodities. I mean, and it's not going to kill me if Silva and Dickey end up in AAA next year. So I'm going to explore a trade for a catcher or reliever or something like that. Those are pretty much our two biggest holes in the team at this point. And then after we sort of decide whether or whether or not we make a trade or what trade we do make, then we'll sort of evaluate what to do with the rest of our money. So we'll be back. All right, so we're going to work on a deal here for Sammy Ayala, who is a player for the Arizona Diamondbacks, who's coming off of a great rookie season, five wins above replacement, hit 313. 120 games, or 120 games started, 136 total. Um, pretty highly rated. Pretty solid player all around. Doesn't have one great skill, but does a lot of things pretty well. Good defensively, not great, but pretty good. He's also decently fast. So he's kind of a jack-of-all-trades type of guy. Um, another guy I was going after was of the Los Angeles Angels, Sam Ferry, who I do sort of prefer rating-wise because look at his uh, you know OBP skills, potential great power bat, um, not very fast and can play catcher in first base. Not great defensively, but the asking price for him is pretty high. And even if you throw in Michael Cantu, I think it'd still take a lot to get him. Um, yeah, it would take one of these pretty much studs. So we're going to go back to the Diamondbacks and go to the Ayala trade. Now, it was originally Schwarber and J.J. Schwartz, but I sort of prefer Schwartz over Schwarber just because um, if you look at Schwarber's ratings... Yes, our head scout likes him, but the OSA ratings are not high on him. So that means I think his value is going to be a little bit lower in general, which means Schwartz is probably better to hold on to. Um, and he sort of projects kind of like an Ayala, sort of a jack-of-all-trades. Not quite as good at a lot of these skills, but better defender. Um, and he's only 23 years old. He is a righty. Ayala bats lefty, so there's a potential for, for a platoon there. Um, so instead of giving up Schwartz, we're going to give up Michael Cantu, who was our first overall pick from the 2014 draft way back when, who has really never panned out. He's 24 years old still, so he could be sort of a project player, um, but he seems to sort of have panned out into what he is now, which is, I don't know, I mean, yeah, he was okay last year in the minors, so I don't know, uh, maybe they can salvage him a little bit. And we're going to throw in Derek Dickey, who um, I just don't really, I mean, he, he has good ratings out of the pen, but I... Not in love with the guy. I'm not attached to the guy at all. So I think he's fine to give up. Um, and he projects as a starter. So maybe he can help out their rotation. Um, and I'm going to see if there's anyone else we can squeak out of this. Uh, probably not. Someone like Mark Montgomery. Oh, is he making some money? He's making $3 million. Um, and probably <laughs> Thomas Zapuki or whatever. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, we can <laughs> certainly look at the mate. Yeah, okay. That's... What about if we throw in Schwartz and make it work? Maybe throw in Pineda too. Yeah, okay. Never mind. That is a pipe dream. So we'll go back. Um, maybe Archie, uh, Archie Bradley's making money this year. I don't want to invest in him. Wow, they, they have some good young position players here. Can we get Mountcastle back? <laughs> uh, I do sort of... I don't know if I how I feel about giving up Mountcastle. 
Well, they have some good position players. It could be a good young team in a couple of years or even in the near future, I would say, um, with some of their players. They have some good players here. Anyway, so we're just going to do this trade. Not mess around with it anymore. Um, all right, so Dickie Schwaber and Cantu for uh, Sammy Ayala, who will be our starting catcher next year. Fan, ac fan reaction. It looks like Ayala is pretty popular, so that's good. So another deal we do with Houston. Um... So that didn't really free us up any money, I don't, maybe a couple hundred thousand dollars, but um, we do have a hole now because we only have one lefty in our pen. So we need to sign a lefty, I would say, um, if we go to, and we only, yeah, we don't have any lefty starters. So as, as of now, our team is a little bit prone to left-handed dominant lineups, I would say. Um, but we'll see what we can do, maybe sign a Rex Brothers type. Guy we went after a couple years ago. Could go after again. Let's see, it looks like Bra, Bra and that's Broxton. Could go after Chapman or T Tim Collins. Wants a lot of money. Um, although Chapman would likely be used as a closer, especially making that much money. Brothers wants a lot. Hmm, not a lot of left-handed options. Collins, Brothers, Sean Marshall would be making a good amount of money. He's old. He's fragile. Don't love that. I think it's Chapman fragile in this. No, he's not. So he's coming off of a bad year. He hasn't, had, he hasn't been good for a couple of years, really. But his ratings are high. He'd be a great lefty in the pen. Cole Hamels. I don't know if he would... What does Cole want? Cole wants $5 million. I don't know if Chapman would take over as the closer or not. I'm sort of skeptical that we actually have $8 million to spend. I think that's a bit of a false number, but... All right, I think we'll have to go after Chapman. I mean, I really want to go after Kimbrell, but we need a lefty. I don't think we can afford to get anyone except a lefty. So let's see if we can get... He only wants one year. I'd be down to do that. All right, so one year, $6 million. And that leaves us with only about $2 million left in free agency money, which we'll likely hold on to for any deadline deals or anything like that. Um, but let's see what if when Chapman gets back to us. Trade proposal. Edouard Cabrera. They want a couple prospects. Cabrera, not that good of a pitcher. I think I'll decline. Machado to Baltimore. Who is? He's always been with Baltimore. <laughs> um... All right, so let's see if Chapman signs. I want an update on Chapman. I have to simulate ahead here a little bit. No comment on Chapman. Mariners talk. Okay, so Chapman drawing interest from others. Brian Johnson finally got shipped out. First round pick. Brian Johnson. Might uh, cut out here for a sec. Let's just skim to, or skim to here. And see if we get word from Chapman. We do. I don't know. It's a proposal. Alexander Guerrero for Tyler Shim for Jordan Luplo. No oh, thanks. All right, so I'm going to cut out here until we get an update from our oldest. All right, so we have to offer to Chapman to one year $8 million, which is pretty much the most or the highest we can go. And he's trying to drive up the bargain again to Washington, or I guess Washington gave him a better offer. So we're going to look elsewhere for a left-handed arm out of the pen, and it does look like um, Bumgarner goes to the Angels. I'm not sure if we got a draft pick out of that, though. It didn't give us a message about it, but whatever. Um, either way. It's not a huge deal if we don't. He got five years, and what's 15 times 5? Uh, 105 or something? I, no. What am I saying? 75. Duh. Anyway, uh, and Brandon Belt to another Los Angeles team. Anyway, ooh, the Dodgers. Or no, it's the Diamondbacks. Oh, the Diamondbacks looking for another pitcher. Uh, anyway, so let's go back to the... Make, or not a make a trade. The free agency list. Actually, it's better to do it from the offseason center. Um, and we can look for probably some diminished prices on some guys. Uh, prices do tend to go down as the offseason does. I just saw that uh, Puig and Hernandez have signed. But, yeah, Kimbrell still only wants $6 million. It wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to, you know, have a ton of righties. I mean, we could flip, I don't know, one of our guys for a lefty probably. I don't think it would be impossible if you wanted to. I mean... Yeah, why not? Like, let's just go after Kimbrel. If he only wants six million, okay. Well, now he's asking for a lot here, and I don't, I don't know how much we can offer in the second year. But let's say we went down. 
to seven million. I don't I don't think we can afford seven million in the second year is the problem. I'd have to just do a one year deal. Got good news and bad news. Uh, okay. I don't think we're gonna be able to offer something like this. Yeah, okay. It's over by two million. So we can only offer five in that second year, which I already know he's not gonna take. So we could do seven in the first year. Oops. Let's do one year. We'll do this is sort of a desperation, but second year we'll go back down to five. He's not gonna take this. I just feel like he's only gonna want a multi year deal. We'll even make it three years. <laughs> yeah, okay. So yeah, we can't offer him his demand. So we're gonna have to look elsewhere once again. Uh, like I said, I don't think there's gonna be really any money for us to clear here if we go to the salaries. Um, I don't want to get rid of Pineda or Chapman or Ramos and then these top guys we're not trading so unless we wanted to I think even Manchu Wong's contract is up so he's not even on our books um, hmm. anyway so taking a look at next year it doesn't look like we have anyone big going to arbitration which is good the following year is going to be Bryant and Godfrey so that's or, and Jones and then the year after that, we're going to get some more guys. So we do have a couple couple good years probably. And then some of these extensions come off the books at that point. So team's going to look a lot different then anyway. So I'm not too worried about that stuff. So I don't, I'm not too concerned about future money uh, necessarily being tied up, although it doesn't look like we have um, a huge... Wow, Pineda's going to want... He's signed for another... Oh, just one year. Okay. All right, whatever. I'm getting distracted. So I'm probably going to have to... Well, let's go back to the free agent list and if there aren't any left-handed relievers I like I'm probably gonna have to make some sort of deal for one I can't believe Cole Calhoun wants a hundred million dollars uh, let's go to relievers try to find a lefty that we like brothers is not gonna sign for cheap probably gonna have to be someone old we can only get it like a one-year deal like maybe Sean Marshall I think we'll maybe go after Sean Marshall or not Marco Gonzalez yeah, probably Marshall, maybe Alex Torres, but let's see if we can get Sean Marshall. It was fragile, um, but his stuff is pretty good, and he's only going to want to... Okay, he wants two years, a vesting option with 40 games. That's fine, I can do that, but let's make this $5 because if he's good enough to pitch 40 games for us, he's going to be worth that money in the second year. All right, so we'll uh, simulate that until we get an update on Sean Marshall. All right, so we're at the end of spring training. No one got hurt, thankfully, um, which is always a good sign. I think I probably forgot to set the lineups and stuff, so I don't even think Alatori. I guess he, I guess he played a lot in the spring. Okay, so that, that's good. I was sort of concerned about that, but um, anyway, oh um, wait, who? Oh, I guess it was Springer who wouldn't have played a lot because he was hurt. I always forget that he was not uh, a part of the playoff run for the most part last year. But it uh, looks like he was playing a good amount in the spring. And he had a good spring, so that's good. Anyway, um, so let's now take a look at the free agents. And see what we can do. Righty-lefty, really, um, at this point. <laughs> Jose Abreu. He's not very highly rated in this game. Um, but anyway. So brothers. Okay, so Rex Brothers. is the, Ooh, and Patrick Corbin. He, wow, his stuff might play out in a bullpen role, too. But he is a fine starter. Look at his ratings. If we needed the starter, I would be all over Patrick Corbin right now. Um, and he wants $5.5 million, but he probably doesn't have too much leverage at this point. So we'll go after Rex Brothers. Could be another good lefty. Uh, one year, we'll give him $2.5 million. And I'm pretty sure he's not really going to have a choice but to take that. And we'll go back. Who else? I know Kimbrell and Chapman signed. Walden is still available. It could be a big righty to pick up. Bring him back. I think we should. He had an okay lead year last year. Let's offer him a contract. We'll offer him the same deal, 1.5. And that still leaves us with some money left over. Um, if we go to... If we go back... To, what am I doing here? If we go back to sign a free agent... I think that'll leave us with some money left over, which I'd like to hang on till to the dead or hang on to till the deadline. Yeah, it still leaves us with four million, um, but I wouldn't say we need anyone else. 
Yeah, there's not, not anyone else here that really intrigues me too much. Um, yeah, this is looking at all players. We also are going to need... Um, we have Schwartz probably to be our backup catcher, but we could take a look at backup catchers and keep Schwartz in AAA. We have Guerrero, we have Santana, we have Adams. So I'd say backup catcher is the only thing we could be looking at here. <clears throat> um, Luke Roy, Tony Sanchez... Rosario, maybe. I mean, I'd like a good defensive catcher. Having a guy who can hit off the bench isn't a bad thing. All right, Luke Roy's pretty good defensively, and he's sort of solid on offense. So maybe we'll offer him a contract he wants. Offer him one year, one million. How about that? All right. And Luke Roy immediately likes that, and he signs that. Okay, good to see. And hopefully, brothers. Okay, brothers gets back to us. He likes that. And let's see if Walden gets back to us anytime soon. Oh yeah, it's going to generate, and it's going to generate probably faulty preseason predictions because I think part of it, someone suggested this in the comments, one of the reasons why our prediction or our projections that one year were so low is because our lineups were not set or anything like that. Um, and we didn't set them yet this year. Although, wow, projected for 114 wins. So apparently, maybe that's not it, but that's incredible. Wow, 114 wins. And can we take a look at the NL? Is it further down or what? Maybe, I don't know. Wow, 114 wins. That's uh, ballsy. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Jesus. What, what about the individuals? Correa. Wow, look at that slash line. Bubba Jones, another good year projected out of him. Good, wow, and Quintana is supposed to be out there too. Could be a good year. Um, all right, and our owner thinks we should just have a winning season, which I think we can do, I hope. Top prospects, um, we'll see. I don't think, it looks like Mountcastle didn't make it. I'm, he might not be considered a prospect anymore. I'm sure that's it because he probably would make it otherwise. Nate Perkins, another one of these great young arms for the Diamondbacks is the top prospect who our scout doesn't like, but the OSA ratings, whoa, he could be something special. I can see why he's the top prospect. Projected a strictly bullpen, though, surprising. Um, but anyway, is that a projected role or... Yeah, it's projected role in the MLB. It's surprising. Wow. Um... All right, anyway, so keep six, skipping ahead. Hopefully we get these relievers to sign. That would really sure up our bullpen. I really want Walden and Brothers. I don't want to offer them too much more, though. I do like leaving money around for the deadline. Something I did not do last year, and I sort of regretted. Um, although it didn't come back to bite us, obviously. But still, it's something if I could go back on, I probably would do a little bit differently. But at the same time, we uh, probably needed the guys that we got to help us get off to that great start. All right, Walden signs and Brothers. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. So let's go to the roster. We'll have to throw these guys on the active roster. And then we can get to... Oh, we probably... It's probably full right now. It is. So we're going to get to setting up our rosters and stuff. And I will be back. All right, so here's what our pitching looks like heading into the new year. Strasburg takes over as the ace. I think that's pretty... Uh, I think that's pretty solidified after he won his second straight Cy Young. Probably, probably more than his second straight, quite honestly. But it's second straight that I can remember. And... Pitch better than Walker last year. Pitch better in the playoffs. So, uh, Pineda the three, Quintana and Godfrey the four and five. That could probably change at some point in the season, but it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Each guy's going to come out once every five days. Um, bullpen, pretty simple. Same three guys will be the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning guys from last year. Walden and Brothers hopefully can give us more than what we got out of guys like Kelly and uh, just uh, Gonzalez and some of those guys. And then I sent down Aldo Silva. It was a tough decision because he is a four and a half star, both with the OSA ratings and our head scout. But basically, it's going to be a competition for a month between Butler and LaMarche. Whoever does worse, or if one of them really sucks, or both of them really stink, uh, pardon my French, um, will, you know, they'll be gone. Or if both of them play really well, I'm going to have my hands tied. I'm not really going to, not really sure what, I wouldn't really be sure what to do with a guy like Silva, maybe trade him. But. Anyway, um, Silva will be up at the Major League level at some point very soon. It's pretty much just going to, we're going to see, we're going to play it out and see how Butler and Lamarge do. Um, lineups, pretty same, pretty similar to what last year's were. Um, we still have these three lefties here. So we're going to go Springer, Ayala, Bryant, Alatori. Al 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 I always call him Alatori, but it's Alatori. Um, debating right now in my head to move up some of these guys, like maybe Springer to the 
fifth hole and Bryant up one, but I think we'll leave it as this for now. See what happens. Um, if guys have good years or bad years, they could be moved up or down. Singleton's ratings are really down this year, um, and he's going to strike out a lot, so I'm a little bit concerned for him. Um, but we'll see if he gives us an 865 OPS or whatever he gave in mean, spring training. Then, hey, that's fine. Um, we'll take that out of him. And, yeah, that's pretty much that. So, Bench, Guerrero, Santana, Lucroy, Adams. I'm sure we'll sign D. Gordon in, in August. In fact, we might as well even do that now. <laughs> Keep him on the team. Why not? Or from a minor league contract. I guarantee he's not signed. I'd be pretty surprised if he was. And then we're pretty much going to wrap up this episode. So I think it was a pretty good offseason considering our projections. Wow, Max Scherzer is a free agent. Um, but let's go to all infielders. Whoops. All infielders. And we will... We still have Jose Iglesias on the team. Um, but we will go... Let's just sort by name. Oh, that's his relievers. Where, where are we trying? All infielders. Okay, and we'll go to the G's. The Orange is an honorary member of the team at this point. <laughs> really, we sign him every year. Might as well sign him early now, make sure he doesn't get snatched up, which I doubt he would, but why not, I suppose. Oh, maybe he did get signed. No G, oh, oh wow, so I guess D. Gordon did get signed by someone. I guess his postseason heroics were enough. Um, so in that case, let's go to all batters. And I'll try to find some really fast guy to store in our AAA system for half the year. Uh, let's go to batting ratings. I think it's going to be in there, right? Speed. Sort by speed. 20 speed, 20 steel, something like that. Uh, let's get someone with a with a name at least. I mean, I guess there's really no point. I mean, this guy's not going to hit for us. So we probably should just sign a guy like Jesus Osorio. But it'd be good to get a guy with a name you recognize. So we'll keep going a little bit. Although, if it comes down to it, we might just end up. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's anyone really out there for now that is a name that I recognize. So we'll probably sign Jesus Osorio. I think he was a 2019 guy. There's no 20. Oh, here's a 2020 guy. Liam Scar. All right, let's sign this guy. He's basically exactly what we want. So Liam Scar Scafariello. Ooh, he's 6'4. Jesus. All right. So we'll sign. We'll offer him a minor league deal. I'll probably take it. But. Anyway, that's going to do it. So thank you guys for watching episode 19. I think it was a pretty good offseason considering what our... Uh, I don't know how to find it from here. I think you have to go to like some sort of league info maybe. And I don't know. I don't know how to find it now. But I know there is a way you can find it. But either way, big season ahead, I think. Uh, team got better, I would say. Got better all around. We take one high power, high strikeout guy in the lineup out of there. Replace him with... Uh, a more contact-driven guy who's not going to strike out as much. I think that helps well round our team. Bullpen and pitching, I think, are both better. Or bullpen and rotation, I should say. So that's pretty much going to do it. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you did enjoy. And it doesn't matter. Peace.